The Marin County, California DA's office recently decided to reduce charges against five individuals who, in October of 2020, defaced and pulled down a statue of St. Junipero Serra on the grounds of the Mission San Rafael. The charges were reduced from felonies to misdemeanors. In the last several years, there have been hundreds of cases of vandalism and desecrations of Catholic Church property. Would similar acts be considered hate crimes if committed against Jewish or Islamic institutions? Here now, with his thoughts on this matter and more, is canon lawyer and Archbishop of San Francisco, His Excellency Salvatore Cordelione. Archbishop, thank you for being here. In your letter to the Marin County DA, Lori Fagoli, or Frugoli, uh, opposing her decision to reduce these charges for these vandals. You said that you were disappointed but not surprised. Why weren't you surprised? I've received this kind of treatment from government officials before over and over. It became very clear during the COVID pandemic the way the government was treating us. You recall how they were clamping down on houses of worship, conducting worship services, and all the efforts I had to make to uh, force them to free up worship when they were letting other people go back into operation. I would meet with both mm -hmm. uh, government officials here in San Francisco, the bishops of, of California would converse with the government officials in Sacramento. And it was the same thing where they would tell us they're trying to make this work. They want to make sure uh, everyone is kept safe and they affirm what we're doing. In the meantime, they let other people go back into operation, but they keep religious worship services uh, under very tight regulations, not even allowing us to conduct services inside when they allow department stores to be open according to their safety plan. And we submitted a safety plan that had scientific evidence that it is safe to use. And they will not answer our questions as to why we were being treated unequally. So I've seen this happen too many times with government officials. So that's why I was not surprised that it happened again. I was hopeful that it might not, especially when the DA charged the, these uh, uh, perpetrators with a felony charge, a felony vandalism. It did give me some hope, but I wasn't banking on that because I've been around that block too many times before. Hmm. Well, it's remarkable to me that this story drops the same week as a story of a California elementary school, they found a, a burned pride flag in a potted plant, and they're investigating that as a hate crime. Do you see the disconnect here? Uh, well, sir, I see the hypocrisy. Uh, certainly, we're, we're not treated that way because we're Catholics. This is all part of anti-Catholic bigotry that's been a part of the country from the very beginning. It's waxed and waned. When I was growing up, people my age were growing up, it was waning. We had kind of a more of a consensus around the country of the Judeo-Christian ethic. The country was started with the Protestant vision, a biblically-based Protestant vision, but found ways to accommodate later immigrants, Catholic immigrants and Jewish immigrants from Europe principally, and then other immigrants from other parts of the world. But now this anti-Catholicism is back on the rise, and this is another example. A hate crime is perpetrated against us, and at least it got charged as a felony, even though it ended up not being uh, a felony charge. Uh, yeah. But I knew there was no way it would be charged as a hate crime simply because we're Catholic. Um, so yeah. it's more uh, well, it's hypocrisy that's happening here. Uh, Archbishop, according to the uh, Marin County DA, this decision came after a thorough review by prosecutors, long discussion among church members, community members, the defendant's participation in what they call a restorative justice process. Were you or anyone at the San Francisco Archdiocese part of those restorative justice conversations with these perpetrators? No, and this is what makes it absolutely outrageous. When the perpetrators, people were telling me that I, I should go for restorative justice, I was waiting for them to suggest it. When they did, I was the one who suggested we do it before the trial. Normally, it's done after a trial. There's a conviction, so you know there's a criminal, mm -hmm. and then restorative justice tries to bring about reconciliation between the criminal and the criminal's victims. I'm the one who said, mm -hmm. well, let's take this extraordinary step and do it before a trial. Maybe we could avoid a trial. I didn't want there to be a trial. Uh, reconciliation mm -hmm. and, and re restoration is better 
than a trial and a, and a conviction. But the archdiocese was kept out of the process. The mediator was working with the perpetrators, stating she wanted to get them ready then to, the, to then bring in the archdiocese, but she, she was keeping us at arm's length, and me in particular. She saw me as a problem mm -hmm. and the perpetrators as the victims. When I was going this extra wow. mile, to try to be conciliatory. Uh, there was a parishioner at the parish who was against me, siding with the perpetrators, and they were listening to him. And now they're saying because of that, there was restorative justice. And I was very clear with them, he's not to be a part of the process. They agreed he would not be a part of the process. Uh, I was very clear, I'm the one who represents the perpetrator, the, the victims of this crime. The pastor represents the right. parish, and there are the immediate victims, but all Catholics, especially in our archdiocese, are the victims I represent them. We were kept out mm -hmm. of the process, and now she says they participated in restorative justice when the victims, representatives of the victims, were not even involved. I, I, well, and in your letter, in be? your letter to the it's district, clearly, it's clearly yeah. because we're Catholic. This would not happen with well, any it, other vulnerable minority well, group. You're right. And look, in your letter, you point out that the officers of the San Rafael uh, Police Department, they watched this felony being committed, and they did not step in to do anything about it because of orders from a higher authority. And there's I, been no I'm, investigation into who gave that order. Why do you think I'm that's the case? It, I'm presuming it was orders from higher authority because there was an agreement between the parish in the San Rafael Police Department. They knew this statue was vulnerable, that if protesters trespassed onto the property, the police would intervene to stop them. And not only that, this they they were protecting the statue. They 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 wrapped it in in uh, some uh, uh, soft uh, uh, like cloth and then wrapped that right. around a very strong plastic uh, packaging material called Ball Queen. It's very thick and heavy. Mm -hmm. They came with the tools they needed. They knew they had to, to cut this up and remove it and remove the padding in order to deface the statue before tearing it down. Mm -hmm. So they, they were all prepared and they knew what they were doing. And there was this agreement and the police did not stop to intervene. Did, did so not, there was premeditation here. Stop them. And yeah, so there was premeditation on the part of the They're, they're doing this against Junipero who defended the people. So you see in the in the video clip at, at one point there's a protester holding one of these signs that says "Land back now." Well, actually, that was the plan of the Franciscans. They came to educate and evangelize the Indians, teach them trades, teach them the arts, teach them the Catholic faith, uh, teach them how to uh, cultivate crops using the land, teach them how to domesticate animals and, and animal husbandry, and then hand the territory back to them for their own self governance. But that all fell apart when Mexico obtained its independence from Spain, secularized the missions in 1834, expelled the Franciscans, seized the territory for itself, closed the schools, and then dispossessed the Indians of everything they had been given. And then a few years later, when California went into the American period, there was an explicit genocide on the Indians. They militias went out to exterminate them. So, but the Franciscans. Their plan was to give the territory back. They weren't able to because Mexico stole the land from the church. So hold your give the land back signs to the Mexican government and the California government, not the Catholic Church. Yeah, no, it's amazing. The, the distortions of Junipero Serra and his legacy is really remarkable and bears no semblance of the historic record, which I've, I've read, I know you've read extensively, and you just recited some of it. The perpetrators who committed this crime, Archbishop, have been asked to pay mon monetary restitution to the church to repair or replace the statue. They have to complete 50 hours of volunteer work, uh, apologize in writing, participate in a community forum with a credible historian, and they have to stay off church property. Now, you argue that, quote, this course of action would not have been taken with anyone else. In fact, this crime likely would have been charged as a hate crime, at least if it were perpetuated against certain other minority or vulnerable groups of people, perpetrated rather. W why do you think that is? Why does it seem these crimes against Catholics or Catholic property is not taken as seriously as crimes against any other group or faith? 
as I said, there is this long history of anti-Catholicism in the country. It's different now than it was in the early part of the history of this country. Thank God we're past mm -hmm. that now where it was Protestants, you know, perpetrating this anti-Catholicism. We now enjoy, especially with some groups of Protestants, strong bonds of fellowship because of coming together on, on critical moral issues of our time. So it's now more from what I would call the secular fundamentalists who are opposed to the church's values and, and what we stand for in terms of, well, the dignity of the human person, what it means to be a human person, and God made them male and female, and all, all of the, well, what I call the below the belt issues, right? There's so much yep. opposition to our, 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 our values around uh, marriage, uh, family, uh, the dignity of human life in every condition, in every situation. There's so much opposition to that. Uh, and so this is what's fueling the anti-Catholicism of our own time. What very much worries me is, as I said, this gives the signal that people can get away with attacking Catholic Church property and our sacred symbols without any legal consequence. And we know from yeah. history that it doesn't stop there. It keeps getting worse. We've already seen it getting worse mm -hmm. in our own country. Look, for decades yeah. now, the government has been taking away our rights of full religious liberty, right? To serve the community according to our moral values. We have the Catholic Charities Adoption Agencies, the Little Sisters of the Poor, and then government officials starting, strange to you, this term, freedom of worship, not freedom of religion. Mm -hmm. Then during the religion. COVID lockdowns, they were even suppressing our freedom of worship, the core of the many elements of religious freedom. It now attacks on property, on sacred objects. It just keeps getting worse. And history shows that if this goes on unabated, uh, uh, unabated that attacks on property eventually morph into attacks on persons. So this well, is something. And, and I think I think you're, you're touching something that we are seeing a, a trend, and you don't hear about this because it isn't reported widely. If this were any other group, it'd be front page news. I mean, the other day you had a pro-life. Uh, a protester uh, outside a clinic. He was popped, an 80-year-old and another 70-something-year-old, popped in the face and beaten down. And I saw no coverage of it except a few little squibs on Twitter. There have been nearly 300 attacks on Catholic churches, including arson, destruction of statues, gravestones, graffiti. And that's just since 2020, 300. What does this decision by the Marin County DA and others like it say to Catholics and our place, if you will, in society today? Well, it reaffirms what I said in my experience trying to deal with government officials during the COVID lockdowns. We don't count. We're expendable, and any decisions involving our rights will be based on what is politically expedient. That was my experience during COVID lockdowns. That's my experience, again, during this horrendous crime that is is deeply painful to those of us who are devout Catholics and very devoted to St. Junipero Serra, who was like a neighbor for me when I was growing up. I grew up three miles from the first church that he founded in San Diego. He was like a neighbor of mine growing up. And so I have many mm. Catholics like me have this great devotion and fondness for him. He's a true father of California. And so right. this is deeply painful, but we're told, no, that doesn't count. For other Archbishop, people, it does, when I, when I but not for us. Yeah, when I see this, I think it's another symptom of Americans' uh, self-hatred and turning on their very their their own history and who they are. They're very persons. When you try to expel somebody like Junipero Serra, who not only founded California but brought humanity and faith to the region, civility and civilization, really. Um, when you try to stamp him out, what are you replacing him with? That's the question. I have to move on to another story. The Dodgers, as I don't have to tell you, have decided to reinvite this anti-Catholic group of drag queens, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, to their what they call Pride Night later this month after mounting pressure from the LGBTQ community. Your Excellency, this group openly mocks the church. Um, obviously lampoons nuns and the person of Jesus himself, turning him into a sexual object. I'm not going to show the video, but um, I know you're a big baseball fan. What was your reaction to the Dodgers' decision when you heard it? Oh, I felt disgusted. But it's another example of how it keeps getting worse. They've been doing this 
for many, many years without any consequence. That's not enough. Now it's being celebrated in the popular culture, right? So it just keeps getting worse. And uh, again, would this happen with any other religious or minority group that the, the country would celebrate a group that disparages them and violates what they hold sacred? But somehow with Catholics, it's allowed. And this this has nothing to do with the dignity of LGBTQ people, right? I know many of them have been harmed because of their sexual orientations and their their perceived gender identities. I know they've been harmed, but this is this is not about affirming their dignity. That this is just absolute indecency. Everyone should be opposed to this, regardless of where they lie on that spectrum, because it's just plain indecency and and should not be accepted in any kind of a civil society. Archbishop, do you think the Dodgers and other groups feel um, empowered or free to kind of engage in this kind of political activism because Catholics have sort of opted out of the public square or simply don't believe any longer? Is that what we're seeing, kind of a diminishment of practice and belief? So nobody steps up to defend uh, the church or its symbols or its statues or even what it stands for. Pope St. John Paul II knew what it takes for truth and, and justice to prevail. It's solidarity. The trade union in Poland was solidarity, right? It was because of solidarity that it, the movement began in Poland and they were able to bring an end to the Soviet empire. With solidarity, we could prevail. It's, as you say, it's a lack of solidarity among Catholics. We become too complacent and too accepting of whatever the social pressure, social Pressure is a very intense uh, mechanism to get people to conform. We've been too complacent with that. But I'm afraid the time is not long before we will have no choice, because I see this getting worse and worse and worse. There will be no room to be a complacent Catholic. And maybe this is the winnowing process the church needs that God is providing for us in our own time. So I'd make this plea to my Major fellow Catholics. Please be faithful. Yeah. Please be true. And let's bond together in solidarity for what is true, right, and good for all citizens. Major League Baseball players have objected to what the Dodgers are doing here. They've even rebuked them. Uh, Catholic player Trevor Williams, who pitches for the Nationals, tweeted the following earlier this week. To invite and honor a group that makes a blatant and deeply offensive mockery of my religion and the religion of over four million people in Los Angeles County alone undermines the values of respect and inclusivity that should be upheld by any organization. I also encourage my fellow Catholics to reconsider their support of an organization that allows this type of mockery of its fans to occur. Your thoughts, Archbishop, on his statement, and should Catholics boycott Dodger games, or at least this game, Solidarity will prevail if Catholics and other people of goodwill who want what is decent and right bond together in solidarity with uh, with approaches such as that. Then um, I think all professional sports organizations will get the message that people will not tolerate this. But we need to be mm. unified in doing so. Well, you know what's interesting? Following their um, honor of this anti-Catholic drag group, the, the Los Angeles Dodgers announced they'll be hosting what they call a Christian Faith and Family Day on July 30th. Now, does that address the problem here uh, by a after honoring this anti-Catholic group? Is having a Christian Faith and Family Day equal to hosting a group that mocks the faith? We would never do this because we are Christians, and so we don't believe in hate. But what if that Christian event uh, featured a group that disparages LB LGBTQ people and kind of mocks what they hold sacred and what is important to them and disparages it? Would they allow it to go on? Mm -hmm. That's not Good satisfactory. Question. Yeah, we appreciate the opportunity, but this doesn't make uh, restitution for the harm that they've done. 
No, I, I had a player tell me, of, of the, I won't say who, but of an African-American player say, this would be like inviting the Klan in one day and a few days later having the Black Family Day. He said, it doesn't fly with me, but uh, I'll let him speak for himself in time. Archbishop Salvatore Cordelioni, we thank you for being here and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.